We are friends united. We are friends united. We are friends united. Together, we are friends united. I found light in, in the toxicity around me in my paintings. Mm -hmm. So that's what I grew into. I couldn't speak. I couldn't you know, express my emotions really other than through painting. I love painting my mother nature's because that's just who we live on and should respect. And most times I will just have an image in my head, a very good image. Like I, if, I, if I feel it, I'll want to do it that day. And then bam, I'll, uh, it'll, be magic. You just paint with emotions and then when you keep, when you're getting, well, when I get lost in it, I get very overwhelmed and then I start crying. <laughs> Hello and welcome, Gwe. This is the Friends United International Convention Center in Unamagi, Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for joining us for the second annual Friends United Reconciliation Talks. I am thrilled now to be sitting down with Cheyenne Gould. And Cheyenne, you are becoming quite a force in the art world. And may I ask your age? 26, I'm 26 years old. Been painting since I was 12. Yes. Yeah, 14 years I've been painting. Amazing. You're really making waves now. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, how does that feel? It feels really good. A little unbelievable, very overwhelming at times, but um, it feels really good. How did it start? It started off doodling, you know, when I was like probably 10, whatever, just doodling and sketching. And then I went into chalk for a bit. I had chalk art for like, just like painting. Really? Yeah. And, but I think they're hidden away now in the <laughs> storage room. <laughs> but, um, yeah, once I started that, I accidentally spilled water on the chalk and then I scraped a little bit and then I seen the motion of it. So I was like, okay, I want paint now. So I, I just, tr I tried to use paint with chalk. It wasn't working. So I just eventually told my mom, I was like, mom, I want to paint. So, and then she was like, okay. Provide, provide you with Dollarama stuff for now. Yeah. <laughs> so I was working with Dollarama stuff for a long time with painting. Was your mom painting then? No, she wasn't. So that's interesting. You started painting before she did. Yes. So, yeah, I did. And then she started getting into quilting and then she was doing her quilt work. And then I was still painting, still in my own little world. And she was like checking. And um, so she would paint and then eventually would be like, can we collab on, actually we collabed on, a, um, pr uh, on one of her quilts with my painting. Oh. Yeah, I forgot to uh, mention that. Really? Yeah, it's in the hallway actually in here. But um, yeah, so she took one of my paintings and put it on her quilt and yeah. So she started quilting with art a little bit then. I don't know what year that was, but um, so she started quilting with art for a bit like that. And then her machine broke down mm -hmm. when I was, I don't know, 16, 17. And um, I was just painting in the living room. That's where we always painted. And um, yeah, she, her, her machine broke and she was just there for two months, not doing anything. Cause like it took <laughs> six months to um, get it working. So she wasn't gonna wait that long. She was just 
wondering what to do and, and she was seeing me paint and she would just look over and eventually I'd be like, mom, just paint with me, paint with me. And then she eventually did and she didn't like it at first because she would have to wait for the paint to dry. And she didn't like the, she, does, she didn't really have the patience for it at the time. But then I just told her, like, just keep up with it. Like, you know, just keep at it. I was like, just, you know, it, like, it feels good, doesn't it? And she's like, yeah, looking at it. Like, <laughs> yeah, so I just like, you know, like, told her, you know, encouraged her a little bit how to paint. And um, yeah, we've just bounced off each other ever since. And she was getting that message from other corners as well. Rolf, who started Friends United, has told me he would often say to Loretta, you should try painting. Yes. And yeah. she would say, mm -hmm. nope, yeah. not interested, not interested. And she'll turn to me, she paints. But I'm like, she could paint too. But then when the sewing machine broke down, mm -hmm. he also said to her, okay, paint. this yeah. is the time. Mm -hmm. You might as well try it. Yeah. And he gave materials and so on. Yes. Yep. And look what ha has happened. Mm -hmm. She bloomed. She bloomed. Mm -hmm. And you've, so you have been, you've been blooming together. Oh yeah, we bounce off each other pretty well throughout the years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, part of that blooming is, is learning mm -hmm. and growing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Do you teach each other? Do you learn together? How would you characterize it? Yeah, we definitely teach each other little tricks and little, you know, stuff. And what do you love to paint? I love painting my mother nature's because that's just who we live on and should respect. And that's what a message I always try to get out. When people see it, they get blown away and they try to ask me, what does it mean? And I tell them like, it's mother nature and I, the connection of it, it's real. And we, we're living on her every day. So I'm just always trying to get that message out too with my paintings. How much did you know about your Mi'kmaq roots when you were a child? I knew it pretty well, but um, we weren't taught our language because they lost it. With um, they lost the, with the. Have you seen the Rita Joe book? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I always say when people say they lost it, I say really it was stolen. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it wasn't passed down. So I can't really understand it at all. Um, but other than that, like with our um, ceremonies and stuff like that, I grew up with all that too very well. I'm interested to know at what stage of your life you learned about the, the horrors of residential school. Is that something that your grandparents talked about? Yeah, my uh, grandparents are residential school survivors. And um, I learned about the, the abuse of it at a very young age, how the trauma could be passed down and carried with you. So, yeah, I just learned at a young age that the residential school had a great effect, negative effect on our people and how it affected our family function. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you feel what they describe as intergenerational trauma. You mentioned trauma. Mm -hmm. Does it show up in your life? Yes, I would say so because he, they the residential school survivors pretty much passed it down to the family. They, didn't, they weren't taught respect. They weren't taught how to self-control. So when everyone tried to speak up about it, it was a hush-hush thing because it's not their fault. It's mm -hmm. the residential school fault. But by now, everyone should know right and wrong. And um, it's hard to be silenced because seeing everyone who try to speak up, especially your cousins before you, they try to speak up and they're just, you're not, you know, they're not believed. So I found light in, in the toxicity around me in my paintings. Mm -hmm. So that's what I grew into. I couldn't speak. I couldn't, you know, express my emotions really other than through painting. Mm -hmm. And I was able to through painting of big, um, bright images, able to share my message along with those. Even as a teenager, mm -hmm. could you feel that art as therapy? Oh, definitely. Even to this day, I still use it as a coping me mechanism. Hmm. So how do you approach a canvas 
or a drum? I know sometimes you paint on drums. How do you start a project? It pops in my head and then I have to go to it. I can't, I could go to a painting and I'll have to sit there for 20 minutes and then a painting will show up in my head. But most times I will just have an image in my head, a very good image. Like I, if, I, if I feel it, I'll want to do it that day. And then bam, I'll, uh, it'll be magic. And where do you think that image comes from? Inspiration through my culture, definitely throughout my life and the love for nature and mother nature and the water. I'm an I'm a Aquarius, so I just love blue in my love for water. I feel uh, it. That explains it. Yeah, I, I noticed that in your paintings. And how do you feel when you're actually in the midst of painting? It's a very overwhelming feeling where hmm, I paint with emotions. It's very hard to explain. Like if you're a painter, you, a painter would understand what hmm. I'm saying. Like you just paint with emotions. And then when you keep, when you're getting, well, when I get lost in it, I get very overwhelmed and then I start crying. <laughs> I legit cry. I cried on that one, on that um, um, Mother Nature one. Mm -hmm. And then I teared up a little bit on that, um, the, uh, the star, the old lady one. The smudging one? The smudging one, yeah. The wishing for you on a star, wish for yeah. you back on a star. Because um, my Grammy passed away when I was, young when I was like three years old or four years old and I remember her in my life she was she was a beautiful lady and that's my mom's mother and she passed away so and I I'm connected with my mom very well and I always see her her little cries for her mom so that one was dedicated to her mm, beautiful and so it almost pulls the emotion out of you as you're painting. Yes, definitely does. But in a good way? Oh, yeah, yeah. good way. Always. Healing? Yeah. And I tried, I got asked three times to do a residential school painting. Could never finish them. Wow. Yeah. Because there's just too much to translate between your emotion and the canvas, maybe. Yeah, I cry mid midway, and I just can't go any further. This is a, this is a, difficult question because I'm asking from a non-Indigenous point of view, hearing the stories that came out in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission was horrific, I think, for all Canadians to understand what really happened when children were taken away, separated from their families. You have described you, your relationship with your mom as really close, and you have a beautiful young son who you're very close to. How does it make you feel to hear those stories as a mother? Heartbreaking. It's like it, I can't imagine being torn away from my family at all. It breaks my heart to this day to even think that it ever happened to our people. And because you're ripping away not just your, your caregiver, your teacher, your a lot of lessons, a lot of things that they could teach you. So you're ripping out the culture from that next generation that, you know. It's unspeakable. It's, it's hard to speak on. Yeah. So your art is healing for you. Yes. So that's the internal part of it. But it's also externally, it's an amazing contribution to the world. And how do you see it as that? Oh, I don't know. It's, it's, it feels still new too is it's I don't it's now that people have more eyes on me I feel like I should put better messages more meaningful like powerful messages out instead of just keep reproducing my same images so like it does feel nice like it does but it's a lot to take in too especially living in a small community, Indian, you know, reserve, and they don't expect you to be out in the world. So I was pulled by, pulled back a lot by that. So having all this is very new to me. I wonder if that will change, that feeling of being pulled back as people see that your work is a form of reconciliation in the world. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's being celebrated widely. Mm -hmm. So is that your 
Is that your hope? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's just hard to um, celebrate in the um, the uh, indigenous community because our people were damaged so much from the residential school and, you know, pettiness comes in, you know, jealousy comes in and all that. And they don't want to see you do good because they're damaged in their ways. So, and once you're healing yourself, they don't like that. And, you know, they don't want to see you go forward. They want, so that's what my pull gets mm. me. Yeah. So that's a bad kind of gravity. It is, but I still find positive positivity in myself and into, into the future. I try, like, I want to put, put into my reserve. I am saving up to have a gallery in my reserve, to have other artists. There's a, a lot of um, indigenous artists in the, the reserves around here that I want to put in my gallery. And I have all their contacts already, and I'm on a roll with that. I think that one of the things Friends United is doing is Rolf has wanted to encourage more Mi'kmaq artists. Definitely. Because that, along with the culture and the language, took a real hit. And, and so now it's really coming back and you, whether you know it or not, or whether you like it or not, at your age, you're leading, you're a, you're a female leader. Thank you. Do you, do you feel a sense of purpose attached to that? Definitely. For, for my personal reasons, like our people were, were silenced. So I'm, I've been silenced personally. So to be that speaker is a lot, but I'll do it. And I guess you, you know, you talk about that, that pull of people who are wounded not wanting you to succeed, but that's, that's not something you, I mean, you need to help them by succeeding. Yeah. Really. And you just got to continue with kindness. Yes. With, it's showing them, showing them definitely. And understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, Tell me a little bit about your themes in more depth in your painting. And actually, I'd love to reach for this one. Okay. Because this is, as I understand it, the first collaboration that you've done with your mom, Loretta Gould. And, and your mom has now become one of the most recognized Mi'kmaq artists in Nova Scotia. I love that. And in Canada. Yes. So. So I, yeah, I was painting this. I paint the woman here. And I had the background going too, but I barely liked the background. So I told her like, well, I didn't like it anyways. And I brought it, I had it on the table for two days, not touched, just had her there and whatever background was there. And um, I was just like, oh, and my mom wasn't doing anything. And I was just like, mom, can you, can you finish this for me? She looks at it small. She's like, yeah, I could, I could finish it. She goes and she goes and finish it. Yeah, like she goes and works her magic. That is magic. And, and so she did the, these are yeah, very she, recognizably her trees. Yes. Yeah. She did the background, her trees, mm -hmm. and then she did her wolf. Mm -hmm. What do you love about your mom's painting? Bright and vibrant. I love it. Love it. And how do you describe your own? I would like to call it bright and bright, vibrant too. But it does have my own meanings. Like, mm -hmm very personal meanings. <laughs> Lots of beautiful blues. And what is, what is the message from this painting? I wanted just to draw a very strong warrior woman in our, um, from our uh, culture, uh, Mi'kmaq. And that's what they have on their face painted, uh, pa a face paint as a warrior. And um, yeah, I just couldn't think of anything else. And, and I had an outline for her, for this wolf. And I wanted to be a uh, Oh, it's something to represent the woman. And then she, I told my mom that, and then she was like, okay, so she made this. And then she made, cause our wolves for me in my dreams, I see them as my protectors. So I, that's how I, I outlined that first. And then I told her, let's reflect it. And then that's what she made a feminine inside that mm. shines light in her. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> What do you see as the changing role of the feminine in your culture? So what do you, what do you see when you look at strong women mm -hmm. in your culture? There's a lot of more um, women um, speakers and women that are like entrepreneurs, like a lot more. Definitely, I see that a lot more than men in our, in our communities. 
Yeah. They're almost taking the lead. Yes, yeah. Like in our my reserve, there's um, Chief. She's female. The female, the Chief Annie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I think we're sending a great message, a powerful message with our people, supporting each other. Absolutely. And you talk about entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. and you are an entrepreneur really now, aren't you? I, I, I was kind of like thinking that too, but yeah. <laughs> well, it's not just your painting. You talk about doing the outline of the wolf. And I would love to have you tell us about the fact that people all over Canada and probably beyond are starting to wear your art. Yes, tattoo designs. I started tattoo designs this year and it's been going great. Mm -hmm. I, I get overwhelmed. It's just, I had to pinch myself after the fifth person that asked me. I'm like, is this real? Like, <laughs> yeah, because like it's permanent, like on you forever. Like, it's, it's crazy. What I greater compliment could there I be? Know, I love it. I love it. So how does it work? How does the process work? And they could message me on Facebook. Um, my Facebook is um, Mi'kmaq artist, Cheyenne Gould. And um, yeah, I just charge 150 per design. But I don't sell my copyrights, so they don't reproduce, or I could reproduce on my end. I could keep selling the um, same images too. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, the idea that there are more and more people walking around with your art displayed on their skin is just like the deepest compliment. It is. It really is. And I just got a message from an um, elder saying she wants to die with my painting on her, oh, her my image, and I cried with that message. Wow. So I sent her, I was like, you don't even need to pay for it. I said, like, I'll, I'll, I'll write up, I'll do, I'll, she sent me the details and I was like, I'll do it and send it your way. Oh. So it, it is very overwhelming for me. It's just, a, it's a very new for, for me. It gives me chills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I've been painting forever. It just, I never got that noticed as much as now. And it's very, I'm so grateful, honored, and it's just, very new and overwhelming. <laughs> and the bottom line is you are now a full-time artist. Yes, yes, painter. Mm -hmm. That in itself says a lot because there are many, many artists out there in the world who would love to be able to do their thing full-time. Yeah. So what a gift. Mm -hmm. I know, I try to um, work. It's just hard to work on someone else's hours when I've been painting for so long. I just, because I did try to um, work. Mm -hmm. I went to school to um, uh, esthetician. I finished that, and but I just stuck with painting. Are your themes and images very much rooted in Mi'kmaq tradition? Mm -hmm. And is that important to you? Yeah, to get that message out and just to keep our traditional alive. Yeah, it's very important to me. Mm -hmm. Bring it back to life mm -hmm. in some ways. And I'm still, I got to learn to, um, I don't know how to say part. It's the old um, writing. Oh. I'm learning that now. I don't even know what they're called. So um, actually, before I ask you my last question, I want to know uh, what your reaction was to the fact that your mom, Loretta Gould's art, is now in Stanfield International Airport. I love it. I freaking love it. I'm so proud of her. Have you seen it? No, I never seen it in person yet, but I'm going up um, next week. Yeah, so I'm gonna go stop by there and um, check it out. What was what was it like when your family found out that was happening? Tell me about that. I wasn't there. I was um, away, but they they once I got home, man, they were so excited there to tell me. And then my mom was like um, doing up all the paintings, and yeah, it was it's so it was it was incredible for her. It's such an honor, you know you. You think that everyone who comes into or flies out of that airport mm -hmm. will see that. And, and the way it's represented in such a large fashion, yeah. it speaks volumes. And then the light, the, the sun that shines on it and it shines through the on the ground, like it's so beautiful. Like I never seen it, but I want to see it in person. <laughs> but it sends a message that this is an important part of our heritage in Nova Scotia. Yeah, you're on Mi'kmaq native land. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. What is your awesome. <laughs> hope for the future? First of all, for the Mi'kmaq people, because we're talking about reconciliation. And then I'll talk about your future specifically. What's your hope for the way the world is changing? I hope for truth. 
to be honest, really truth comes with power right after. So that's all I really hope for because truth leads up to a lot of things, positive things. Could be negative too, but the truth is always good. It's always good. And the truth is often shining through your paintings. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you hope for personally in the future? If you could write the script of your life, what would it be? I just hope I could get my own gallery going and to teach. Oh, I wanted to teach in class. I, I have a whole blueprint um, laid out and everything. So I wanted, I wanted to start teaching too. And would you do that around the province if schools asked you to come? Yeah, our, schools has asked me to go and I have done it um, in my reserve a few times to teach a little in the class high school. But um, yeah, like I, if any other um, schools asked me, I would go to. But my main thing um, goal is to have it in um, my reserve in Wakaba, uh, a gallery there to have night classes. Oh, beautiful. That's great. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is Friends United, mm -hmm. because I think it's played a fairly significant, it seems to me it's played a fairly significant role in your family's life. I'm wondering, do you see what's going on here as a symbol of reconciliation? Oh, definitely. Yeah. It's this build and holds culture itself mm -hmm. and even modern to, to then to modern. Yeah. And what has it done for you? What has the Friends United program meant to you? And specifically, how has it helped you through your, through your um, career as a painter? It definitely gave me motivation and confidence to keep going and thriving. And it's a good, it's a good feel to come back here because it's good motivation, inspiration area for me. So, yeah. And you've probably met lots of mentors oh, here? Yes. My first mentor was Jay, Jay Bell Redberg, yeah. who passed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he was my first mentor that I even like had the first brush off from. <laughs> so yeah, like him and another few, I can't name off the bat right now, so many of them, but um, yeah. And so when you come here, you can, you can get paint and supplies. Yeah, they provide so much with us. I love it. And then if you do an original painting, Often is it the case that they will buy it and then you can, they'll give you prints to sell? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So they just want to support the indigenous culture, the indigenous community. Yeah. Whoever comes here to say they like, they have the canvas and they have the um, talent, then he, he sees potential in you. So do other people, when you tell them about this story, do they express surprise? They do, because I had this other um, lady from Exazoni. She does really good paintings. And um, I try to invite her here three times, and I told her what he provides. And she just, it's too good to be true. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't, she just, I haven't heard back from her. But I'll, I'll push it, I'll push it. Get all the, I'm trying to get my friends in here too. And who are, there, I have a lot of indigenous talented friends too that needs to come here oh fantastic well maybe when they watch this conversation mm -hmm. they'll be convinced yes yeah and, and they they are not the first people to say he's too good to be true oh, and to be suspicious jay told me that the first time i interviewed jay he said for the first while he was like what does this guy want what's yeah. his angle yeah. and then he you know he said to me just a couple of months before his death with uh, great purity. He said, he is as good as he seems. Rolf is every bit as generous as yeah. he appears to very be. Very caring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cares for us. Yeah. It's beautiful. Well, it, I do see it from my perspective as a beautiful example of, of one individual really making an effort at reconciliation. Yeah. He seeks to learn about the struggles, seeks to learn about the success and the positivity in our life and our culture and our history. Like he's there for it yeah. and to, to support it. Thank you for being here for this today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate so honored. It. We are friends united. We are friends united. We are friends united. Together, we are friends united.